Hey, YouTube. Let's talk about the five things I wish I knew when I started out in photography. Some of these things, it took me a little bit of time to learn, a couple of years and, and others, maybe a little bit sooner, but I do think that all of these tips are super important and may save you a little bit of time in the future. So I hope you get some value from them. Okay, tip number one, it's not the camera. The first camera that I ever used was a D3400 by Nikon. It's one of the beginner entry level cameras. It's a crop sensor and it was fine. Okay, so I actually ended up selling it about a year and a half in to photography. And honestly, it was probably a little bit too soon. I felt as though I had already progressed past the point where I needed some a better camera body, some better glass in order to take the pictures that I dreamed of taking. But one thing you'll realize quickly when you sell your camera and replace it with something fancier with a couple more uh, megapixels is that it's really not about the camera. The same mistakes that you were making with that crop sensor, with that entry level camera, they're gonna translate over to that bigger, more professional body which you just paid a lot more money for. Because you didn't learn the key skills that you needed to learn before upgrading. You didn't maximize the potential of that beginner camera before upgrading. Okay, tip number two. So when you're thinking about what camera to buy, the first thing you're gonna come across, especially in that lower end of cameras, is a bunch of bundles. And bundles can be great. They tell you everything that you need or they think that you need and they put it into a nice little package. But definitely be careful when you're buying a bundle. Most of the time, those bundles are filled with lenses that aren't up to snuff. So definitely be careful. Check out reviews of the, of the lenses themselves that are included in that bundle and make sure people actually like them. And um, if they don't, that might be a sign not to get the bundle. See if there's a comparable option, maybe where you just buy a camera body and then a standalone lens. That'll do you just a little bit uh, more justice there. So definitely check out reviews before you buy your camera. And be wary of bundles because most of the time the company is looking out for themselves and not for you. Tip number three. All right, so now you have a camera and now it's time to shoot. So let's start shooting in RAW, right from, right from the beginning. JPEG is the option that most cameras will shoot in by default. And that is a compressed photo that you're gonna get out of it. So why, while that is not bad, and most of the time you're gonna end up using JPEGs, that RAW photo is gonna give you so much more information and you'll be able to do so much more with it in post. You'll get more vivid colors and more dynamic range out of that raw photo. So you definitely want to shoot in raw and then you'll export probably into JPEG, maybe in PNG in some situations, but mostly JPEG afterwards. So yeah, tip number three, shoot in raw. Tip number four, let's learn how to shoot in manual as soon as possible. Now, while most cameras are gonna do a decent job in their automatic settings to get you a photo that looks pretty decent, that is properly exposed, shooting in RAW gives you so much more creative room because after a while, it's not just gonna be about getting a properly exposed photo. Soon you'll be looking to do some interesting things with dynamics of light, maybe you want a brighter, darker photo, maybe just by a little bit, you'll be able to make those minor tweaks using manual settings. And then you'll also be able to do things like get ghosting effects and capture some really fast movement. You'll be able to make a lot more unique and prescriptive uh, decisions when you have a full understanding of your manual settings. And I did a video about this topic actually, um, about how to how to shoot in manual. So definitely take a look there if you have questions on that. I'll be updating that video soon. All right, tip number five, collaborate and share. Listen, trust me, I know. It can be really hard to put 
your work out there, especially when you're first starting, when you're at your most vulnerable, feeling like you know the least that you'll ever know. But it's so important to collaborate work with other people, other photographers or other subjects or other people in the field and, and share, get feedback. And, and really that is one of the fastest ways to grow and get better and, and try new, new ideas. The community is a great place to get ideas and find things to practice because when you first start practice is going to be everything. All right. Okay. Bonus tip. We want to learn the photography rules, all right? And there are photography rules. You're going to come across them in your journey with photography. You're going to learn about things like rule of thirds, the golden ratio, different composition rules, and um, lighting rules, subject rules, things like that, posing rules. There are going to be so many rules that you come across in so many videos. My recommendation is to get a good solid understanding of those rules because those rules can make your make your photos look a little bit more appealing but now you want to get a mastery of those rules so that you know when you're breaking them and so that you can break them on purpose some of the most unique and interesting photos are going to be when you actually break away from those rules with purpose all right so that's it for the video. I'm Nao. I really hope you got some value from this and I hope that it can save you, save you some time in the future here. And uh, hopefully some of these things that took me a little while to learn, you'll learn very quickly. All right. So if you have any questions for me, leave a comment below and I would love if you subscribed. I'm going to be making a lot more of these videos in the future. Okay.